Praise the Lord today. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, hallelujah. The Lord is king. He's always king. He's always sovereign. He controls every event of this whole universe. Hallelujah. God is in complete, total, sovereign control. Never forget that. Never forget that the Father sees all and He is in control. Okay? And always trust in Him. Okay? Because those that trust in Him shall inherit the land. Hallelujah. The meek shall inherit the earth. Hallelujah. Okay? Never give up your faith and your, your trust in the Lord for any reason at all. Keep your focus on the Lord. The Bible teaches us that we're walking by faith, not by sight. We don't look at the things that are seen. We don't, we don't walk by that. We don't move by that. We move by faith. Hallelujah. By the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We walk by faith not by sight. Today's devotion from Austin Sparks, um, Hebrews 3, 13. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end hallelujah and steadfast unto the end there I believe the Lord is saying unto the end of each day hallelujah okay hold your confidence steadfast are you trusting God for for uh, miracles today you trust him unto the end hallelujah each and every day you keep trusting and waiting and hoping and loving and you know a true saint of God is going to have thousands of prayers going up to the Father and thousands of petitions for other people first for the honor and glory of God and for other people and then for one's uh, one's own person in ministry and family okay hallelujah we, we need to be seeking the Lord in this hour and this devotion is talking about the Lord's work okay the Lord's work he says here we talk about our motives and we say our motive was right we talk about our conscientiousness. We talk about our intentions. But you and I do not know what lies behind what we call our good motives. There is a deceitfulness about this human heart that defies our greatest attempt at tracking it down. And we shall never do it. Here is where the church has become such a confused thing and such a tragedy. For the prevailing idea is that if you give yourself over to God, He will take you up and use you. Quote, bring over your humanity and consecrate it to the Lord. Consecrate your old man to the Lord and go out and serve the Lord with a consecrated old man. End quote. It is utterly contrary to the teaching of God's Word. Okay? Consecrating the old man, I, and this is me speaking now, is totally contrary to the teaching of God's Word. It's what I was speaking about uh, in a previous video that all of our old nature that's what it is it's old it's of the curse okay it's the fallen nature of man that nature has to be crucified with Christ you have to reckon yourself dead indeed unto sin okay and then when you do that you are risen to newness of life with Christ. Hallelujah. And that, now listen to the rest of this. Okay, consecrating the old man is, t is totally, utterly contrary to the teaching of, of God's Word. The result is that in the work of God, all the world over, you have people serving the Lord in the energy of the flesh. In the reasoning of the flesh. In the emotions of the flesh. Meet them. Okay, let me let me stop there. In the emotions of the flesh. 
Now God is wanting this message brought forth for you today and wants to remind us as well that we do not serve the Almighty God from the flesh. Now, one key way we can understand and we can know if we're serving the Lord from the flesh, okay, listen to this, quote, meet them, the people working in the flesh, counter them, counter what they're saying, frustrate them, and you meet something evil, yeah, you meet with a fight, a division, a schism, a scattering, and wholesale resignation. That's what we found, end quote. That's what we found in our walk. I mean, you go into a place where God sends you, and you are going in in the Spirit, being led forth of the Holy Ghost, and you bring forth the spiritual reality of Christ, Jesus, risen from the dead, against the flesh, against the fleshly understanding of Christ, risen from the dead, uh, uh, coming up against... The, the vessels who are operating in the flesh. Okay? And instantly you get repercussion. Instantly you get attacked. Okay? Because you're walking by the Spirit. And walking by the Spirit brings a conviction to those who are walking in the flesh. Because in their own vain, vain mind, puffed up mind, they believe they're doing God a service. Okay? Now, he says here, do you see what a havoc the enemy can make in that which is called the church? Because people with best intentions and purest motives have come to serve the Lord with all their own intelligence, their own strength, and their own emotion. They have not seen that God has closed the door to the old creation and that God's attitude is this. Quote, the only thing that can satisfy me, that can serve me, is my son. Hallelujah. And if you are going to come into my service, he has to be the energy of everything, the life of everything, the wisdom of everything. Hallelujah. End quote. He has to be the governing, ruling reality in everything. It is not to be a matter of your impulses. Okay, but of His urgings and leadings by the Holy Spirit. Not your sitting down to reason out what it would be good to do for the Lord. What ought to be done. What needs to be done. But what He shows you. Nothing more. You and I must not bring over our old creation and give it to God expecting God to use it. God begins with birth. The church of the firstborn is something quite new and it comes out of a death. That death is the death of an old creation. Hallelujah. And the resurrection is of something that is not the resuscitation of an old creation but the resurrection of something holy of God. See, that is what it is. It's, it's Christ being birthed in us. Hallelujah. And then it's Christ in us doing the work. Hallelujah. Doing the overcoming. See? The battle is between the soul and the spirit. Your soul, man, has to be renewed. If you go to Romans chapter 12, and Romans is, is one of the greatest books in the Bible. It's a, really a treatise on the condition of man and the purpose of God in saving man and the way God does it. And the devil has come into the church and he's made it all complicated. And it's really, really, really very simple. It says, Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, H-O-L-Y Holy Acceptable unto God Which is your reasonable service Hallelujah So we have to present our body We have to say God I'm your vessel today 
Lord, I just give myself to you today. I just thank you, Lord. I submit to you. I surrender afresh this morning, Lord. Thank you for waking me up. And just worship him and thank him. And say, Lord, I give you give you my body today. I give you my soul. I give you everything, Lord. Do with me as you will. And then when the Lord begins to do that, some of the things that, that what happens is we don't like the way sometimes that God brings us. But what is that in us that doesn't like the way? It's not Christ. Hallelujah. It's not the spirit. It's the soul. That's the flesh. And the flesh kicks and bucks against what the Lord is after, what the Lord wants to do. And what the Father is after is the expression of His Son, hallelujah, in us and through us. To love, to forgive, to give grace and mercy and peace to people. Okay? And the truth, the whole truth, unadulterated. Where we walk with such a jealousy for truth that we do not compromise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 2 of chapter 12 of Romans. And be not conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to this world. But be ye transformed. See, this is where the transformation process is taking place. By the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We can know that good and perfect will of God by having our minds renewed. And we have our minds renewed by prayer, by supplication, and by reading the Holy Scriptures and praying and seeking the Father and allowing the Lord to come in with His sword, His word, and divide us under between the joint, the marrow, and the soul, and the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't give up. If you, if you find you're struggling, if you're struggling with sin, if you're just struggling with understanding, you're struggling with discouragement, you're struggling with things, don't give up. Press in. Paul, at the end of his life, he said, I press on, oh, that I might know him. He said, this is at the end of his life. I mean, he's probably six months away from having his head chopped off. And Paul's crying out, oh, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection, being conformed unto his death. He said, I press on to the mark of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. This is like six months before he died or even sooner. I mean, Paul's crying out to know Christ. Because there's so much to know. There, I mean, it's like Paul probably got ankle deep in that river. With the revelation God gave him, there's so much, saints. There's so much love. We think we know about love. And we've just had, we've just barely touched the surface. Of what grace and love is. It's, it's a mystery. But we have to press in as, as believers. We have to let the Father have His way. Which is to form Christ in us. By the Holy Ghost and the blood of the Lamb. And divide us under between the joint and the marrow and the soul and the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 3. Chapter 12 Romans. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. In other words, and I'm going to go over to, to Ephesians to back this up, in Ephesians uh, chapter 5. In other words, Paul is saying, he's saying, stand side by side with your brethren. Stand side by side with your brethren. Side by side. Not in the front, not in the rear. Side by side in the church. And Ephesians 5 backs this up. Paul says, verse 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. See, be ye not unwise. Where's the wisdom? Where's the seed of wisdom in us? See, in, in the human being, it's in the mind. Okay, we, we know. We know things. We know about things. Many things in the natural realm. But God says to transform our minds by the, by the, 
by the word of God, okay, and be not unwise, okay, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody, hallelujah, in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Many people say, what's the will of God? Give, give Him thanks. Love Him, praise Him, worship Him. Hallelujah. Submitting yourselves, here's the verse, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. This is the church. This is the body of Christ submitting itself one to another in the fear of God. Loving God. Holding each other's hands up. Praying for one another. Serving each other in Christ. Hallelujah. See, the whole ministry of, of the Father is His Son, Jesus Christ. And each one of us as members of the body have a part in that ministry. And our part, all of us have a part it's the same part. It's to die. It's to surrender. It's to fall down before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm nothing. Take me up, Lord. Let that new birth burst forth through me so that you can use this vessel to manifest in the earth your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray you seal this word to our hearts, Lord. And make it real to us, O oh God. Hallelujah. I know it's a, it's a serious matter, Lord. You put some of these prayers you put in my heart, Lord, to pray. After I pray them, I'm just like, God, I just know, Lord, that you want all. You want all of us. You want every part of our being, every cell, every thought. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray you make it real to us, Lord. Hallelujah. Continue to, to fashion us and form us, Lord. And continue to be the almighty awesome God to us that you are Lord you're so filled with love and, and you're so filled with mercy and grace for us oh God but you're also Lord you have judgment and you do have justice and you do correct your children we love you Lord we thank you instruct us today Lord in all righteousness in Jesus name Amen <laughs>